So hi and welcome back. It's meant to be the second hottest day of the year. It's Thursday and Friday. Apparently tomorrow is going to be the hottest day of the year so far. So tomorrow I may go out with some infrared film. I may not do it today. It's really, really, really bright. There's going to be a lot of infrared, I guess, light around and um, do that. Now, the reason I'm doing this video is because things have got really, really expensive. I'm not asking anyone for anything. It's just I'll be cutting down on the amount of film photography I'm doing it's just too costly for me at the moment and the prices have gone astronomical with film so I will be doing other things so I'll be doing things like testing lenses I've got and playing around with lenses and um, so yesterday I took out my a7 III and I went with a Practica Carl Zeiss Jena Tessa uh, 2.8 lens and tested to see how, how, how good the lens was how sharp it was yeah, and I was really pleased. So you're going to see the results in a in a couple of minutes, and then we'll go through we'll go through them, and you can see what you think. But obviously, at 2.8, the lens doesn't perform that well. But when you go down to f/8, you get some really really lovely results with it. So I tested a few shots on f/8 and f/2.8. I didn't use any other uh, apertures at all because I just wanted to just do it like that it was just easier for me to do it like that and then try and remember the apertures because it doesn't record it on the camera and um, it, it, yeah so I was really really pleased with the results I want you to have a look at them and see what you think and I'll put these on my buy me a coffee page so everyone can view them so there'll be a link in the description all right hope you like these photos Okay, so I've got a selection of the photographs. Well, actually, all the photographs I took with the Practica lens. It was on my Sony a7 III, uh, 24 megapixel camera. And I didn't know quite what to expect with the quality of the lens. And I was, as I said before, I was really surprised by what I got. So I just wanted to show you three of them. And there's some you can see that are uh, the same together. Um, one of them was taken on f2.8 and the other one was taken on f8. And it's very clear which one is which, not only because of the depth of field, but the clarity of the actual shot itself. So let's just go through, uh, through these quickly. And uh, this one is obviously just outside my house, actually, pretty much. And I was actually focused. This was the F, I think it was the F8. And um, I was actually focused on the hands. And just look how sharp that is. That's incredibly sharp. And it will obviously tail off because of the um, softness of the edges and the fact it's the distance at f8 and I was so close to it. So you're going to get that drop off with that type of shot. Okay. And another standard shot. Now, one of the things I've noticed with the Practica lenses or the um, Carl Zeiss uh, Tesla lenses, they over focus when you go to infinite distance. And it's really difficult to get a decent clean focus on infinite distance. So if you can comment below if you had the same problem as me, because that'd be really interesting, because I've had it on two of the Tessar lenses now. I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, that's still flipping good. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'd be happy that it was a digital image, you know, without it being a, 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 you know, a cheap lens. Don't know what I was doing here. <laughs> just wanted to get a shot of the bunting uh, but I've got a nice bunting and you've got the actual uh, people in the background in the boat and you see uh, I was probably just trying to work out if it had a good um, bokeh uh, or whatever they I can never pronounce that name properly anyway but uh, you know to give it a nice um, balls as they say you'll see that in a minute in another shot and you'll just see how good they really are Okay, again, another one. This is on that first bridge. Just wanted to see what depth of field was like. I don't know what the aperture was on this one. That's the problem. You can't, unless you actually write it down and note it down, you won't actually see or remember. It's, it's So it, we'd have to have a notepad and pen to write it down because the camera doesn't record the aperture. It records the shutter speed but, and the ISO, but not the aperture. So anyway, look at that, that chain. Look how sharp and clean that is until the drop off where it goes out of focus either end. So I don't know. I'm guessing that I'm guessing it was f4 or 5.6 on that one. And I just focus on the swan, and just trying to you know get a slightly soft background. I was f8, so I, I left basically switched it to f8 before I decided to do a 1.8 uh, 
uh, sorry, a 2.8 and an F8. And yeah, I'd say that's pretty sharp, wouldn't you? That is just unbelievable. I mean, this is a 1970s um, Jenna lens. It's not like one of the ones that come out in the 80s. It's one of the old ones with the um, zebra crossing type uh, focusing uh, thing. And look at it. I'm just so astonished just how good it really is. I think I took two or three of these, so I'll just skip through those. And this one, I think, let's have a look. So that one's... So one of them's at 2.8 and one of them F8. And I think that's the one that's at 2.8. And I think that's the one that's F8. Yeah, it's a lot sharper and cleaner. Um, so yeah, so you can just see how good this cat, this lens is at F8. And I remember always there used to be the joke about the um, Leicas only being as good as a practical lens at F8. Anyone got a Leica lens they can lend me for a few weeks to test it and see if it really is true? That'd be really cool to have a have a Leica lens against a Practica lens at f8 and see see which one was good or better. As I say, I, I remember reading an article about it. I mean, when you open up 1.8, there's going to be no contest between the two of them. So, okay. And this one, I wasn't getting, I didn't get my focus right on this one. I was literally just put the camera up and shot. I was trying to get the three boats in. You can see, yeah, that's, I didn't get the focus on it at all. Uh, but this one, I think I managed to recover it. And there you go. So uh, that's all right. It's not too bad. And this one with the swan and the babies, the swan's a bit blown out, but that's just down to my exposure rather than anything else. It's not down to um, uh, it's not down to the camera. It's me not making any conversations for the fact that the swan was so white. And one of these, I think this is where we start doing the, right, so that's at 1.8. And that's at F8, I think. <laughs> let's have a look okay yeah I think that is it definitely is yeah yeah okay oh let's have a look at the um yeah you can see by the background of the in, in the in the in the trees and the leaves you can see the the balls okay and again i wanted to try this i moved rather than doing start at the center i wanted to move it off to one side so i moved it off to the right hand side for this one this one is at f8 you can see how sharp that is and this one is at 2.8 and you can see how much softer that is so i think the long the story along the tall of the story is that that the practical lens or the, uh, the Carl's Ice lens works really, really well at f8, and it's a really, really good one to to use as a vintage lens. And again, so that one's at f8, and that one is at 2.8. And I had to do this photograph as well. Again, one is f8, one of them is 2.8, and I think that's the 2.8, and that's the f8. Yeah, there it is. You can see the difference in the background. But it's not until you get a bit further down i take a few more photographs on the bridge and not this one um this is just another general one of mine i take what i'm trying to do is actually do stuff that's familiar so people who come back and watch the videos will see the familiarity of, of like from different types of films to different types of cameras and, and different types of lenses so you, you have a familiarity with what i'm doing rather than it being completely different stuff all the time okay so uh, let's go back so that's at what well, uh, that's at 2.8 and that one's at f8 didn't nail this shot uh, didn't nail the focusing at all on either of these ones and then just a shot on the bridge down the river now this is the one i think this is the one you can see the balls the uh, bokeh balls there they're quite they're really quite nice so that's at 1.8 and oh no that's at 1.8 look at that and then that one's at f8 so you can see the difference in the background as well look at that they're lovely they're really really good the lens i don't the lens didn't cost me anything i was given it so uh, by my dad it was one of ones he had a camera practical he just didn't want it he says oh do you want this um and i, had, I took it from him 
and I'm just going to take it. So zoom in on this one, and we're looking at like the W and the the the, the actual um, fracturing of all the paint on there. And you can see that. And I'll go to the next one, and it should be that one should have been 1.8, and this one should be F8. Yeah, you can see the huge difference in the two of them. Uh, I took three shots of that, and I just ended up with taking a photograph of, of the leaf, of the leaf, and that's the last shot. So tell me what you think. Do you think this is a good lens? Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm probably going to use it for filming one day, doing like when I do talk to you from the camera in, in my in my living room. I think I'll do that. It'll be interesting to see how well it comes out. It'll be difficult to set up the focus and everything because uh, it's manual and it won't auto focus and stuff but anyway we'll give it a go anyway don't forget to like comment subscribe and if you can buy me a coffee the link is in the description below